Okay, so hi friends. Um, we filming this. I getting to the thing now. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the tier of tea, my first book review here, and I want to talk about this because I talked about this in my video, first video on books about tea, and I actually really enjoyed it. And I've written this, so I might as well talk about it while I have the book. So this is actually really comprehensive. If you look at the subtitle, it's a comprehensive history. Can repeat it myself of tea from prehistoric times to the present day. In terms of scope and detail, this is by far the most detailed research that I've seen. My thickest book, second thickest book, on, my thickest book, uh, this is not mine, is A Thirst for Empire. It is actually quite much smaller, even if the thickness is around the same, right? It's not in colour. And if you compare it to another thick book, Anna Karenina, feels and looks a lot quicker to read in comparison. And compare it to a normal book. Compare it to a normal book, like comic. This doesn't even take, like, but this takes a fraction of the time. So the great thing about this book is that through 12 chapters, uh, actually we have 11 plus 1 interlude, we go through a very detailed and well-researched account of the history of tea and its effects. Tea with Texas, tea in uh, war and all that. And it starts with the primordial origins of tea, where we look at the area of Yunnan, southern China, uh, before it was part of even China, and then uh, where we will consider Myanmar now, and then how it was tea was taken, before how it was discovered, in China, firstly as a southern drink, how it won over the hearts and got all the way up to the north. So we go through that, we go through the early history with what the archaeological evidence says, the Tang Dynasty, and then there's like how tea is produced, when did black tea come out, what was the first, we know that tea cakes were not what we would consider classic genres of tea, but when did red teas come out, when did scented teas come out, which is, scented teas are a lot earlier than you think, because Lu Yu, the tea sage, he, in charting he did, real against people who added like flowers and flavorings like orange peel i think orange peel was one of them into the tea so we know that flavored teas have been around since the song dynasty at least uh yeah then it goes to tea in japan and korea there's a uh, history of tea in holland how the word came to from holland to britain i actually quite like the fact that he talks about other european nations i think even georgia is mentioned with its tea producing history there's the azores brazil so you can see that in terms of number of countries is really very very global even if yeah so even if they you know there's a lot of lot of focus on um, i think like two chapters on england one on portuguese dutch so at least half of this is on the west but i mean this is really the most global one that i've seen so far um he busts a lot of myths in this apart from the myth of shenong which i think has been thoroughly debunked by now right uh not that you know if you look at certain marketing websites. Um, there's the Catherine myth that it was the Queen Catherine of, I want to say Portugal. I'm sorry, I'm not good at European history. I'm not European, that's why. Um, that she was the one that introduced tea to England. So he passed that one to show that actually there's a good chance that it was the British royal family, some of whom spent time overseas, significant time overseas, that would have brought it over. There is the myth that Robert Fortune was the one that discovered um, that green and black tea were two different species and this is something that I, I really thought for a very long time until I read this and he has very clear evidence that at the start black tea and green tea were seen as coming from two different plants and it was actually I think uh, John, John Hanaway or is it John Hill Less? I, I have a post on this I will link to it that started this misconception that it was from one plant that Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy, that took and ran with it. So he just busts this kind of myths and then like how the word tea came. So um, if, if trade with China wasn't so much, the word for cha and chai would actually some come from uh, Japan where it's cha, right? ocha, sencha. And then um, so how that happened and then uh, from where like tea coming from the, uh, the Hokkien speaking um, areas. There's an interview on coffee and chocolate. I read through that was kind of like mm, not super interesting I've, I have a history of chocolate so I kind of skipped a lot through that but um, yeah and then I think it ends with two chapters one on the size of tea because it's theology caffeine the other health research um, bubble tea and then uh, tea gardens and the tea farms today actually even in earlier chapters on China Japan Korea he does interview or just mention and talk about tea farmers I, I am kind of amused that when he was talking about, I can't find the exact page now, he's talking about like trends in tea and he mentioned Marie Ferraz and then he meant there was a footnote, extensive footnote on TWG which is like this Singapore brand everyone knows and I've always been like oh actually TWG always like imitated Maria, Marie Ferraz and 
yes, he mentions it in the lawsuit. So I was like, yes, I'm not the only one who knows about it. You know, like, there's that. Um, this book is, from what I know, about 400 USD. Maybe because a lot of it is, I mean, it's hardback. A lot of research went to it clearly. Like, almost everything, as you can see, is in colour. Um, let me try to find an earlier picture. Yeah, so you can see, like, the vases, all that, right? It's, it's pretty good. Okay, and honestly, the amount of research is great. There's, I do have, I'm not saying that, like, I love this book and it's completely great because, for example, there is uh, towards, I think after the chapters on China, when we start to get to see the West, I do feel like there's a lot of digressions going on. Like, uh, there was one on tea and Texas, which kind of led to some digression on Texas in the modern day. I don't purport to fully understand what was going on even though I have technically studied economics right but uh, I did not think it was relevant to the text I think it could have been cut off I think in general when he goes into like this little uh, tangent some of them are very worthwhile when we talk about like the typing revolution or like uh, open I think he's just taking one path where T is greater and following it through but sometimes it ends up with you going to down many different paths which may be interesting but Kind of get away from the topic of tea are we looking at tea as a route from which to explore world history in which case this would be relevant but if we're looking at it strictly as a history of tea and then we want to look at only its most relevant impacts in which case there may be a bit of digression for you um for me personally the most useful chapters like the ones that i took extensive notes and i probably have like 50 pages of notes in google docs right now like let's read it i was like okay yeah, who wanna take I thought the most interesting ones were the first three, the ones on the original teas, how they were first eaten as a pickled plant, which you know maybe related to how it's fermented, sheng pu and shu pu. Shu pu coming much, much later. It's a very recent thing. Uh, how tea spread to China and developed within China to the tea culture that we know today. And I think that is really one of the best accounts I've read. Tea coming to Japan and Korea. Again, I don't see much of Korea. Tales of the Tea Trade does talk about Korea, but it's not in this kind of um, rigorously researched sense. And really one great thing is that a lot of, like when he writes in Chinese, it comes with like the Han Yiping and the Chinese uh, Han Si. When he writes in Japanese, you will see the Japanese Kanji. Um, so when he's like excerpting or he's like uh, taking quote, quotes, especially long ones, um, he does quote them in original and then a translation. So. You do get to see where the original was. Um, that I really liked. Uh, so I found the first three chapters, four cha three chapters on the origins, China, Japan, and Korea very helpful. I, I, I really thought it was great. Texas and Versus Freedom of Oppression, chapter 8, possibly my least favorite. I thought he went on very long tension that did not have as much to do with tea, could be cut. Uh, towards the end, chapter 10 on tea terror and tea cuisine. I really like that because you go into the smaller tea producing nations like Georgia, Brazil, Azores, uh, Indonesia, uh, Zimbabwe, Malabi, Malawi, sorry, and Zambia, um, Kenya, uh, let me see, Swiss tea in the Tisano, tea in the Dragon Kingdom. Yeah, so this was great. You don't often hear about the history and he goes through like how it, tea came to that country how it developed, what the tea industry was like. I think Malaysia also had, yeah, Malaysia was also in here. Um, the second last chapter on health effects, if you've been like reading up on the health effects of tea online, I don't think it's going to be anything very new to you. Um, I think I read through this whole thing over a couple, maybe two, three months. I think I started reading this in March. It's June, maybe three months. I took about a quarter of a year to read this. Like on and off, I was reading other stuff definitely a lot of information in here um whether i would buy this okay the, the thing is if this was not 400 dollars, i would buy it if it was like 50 or even maybe 100 i would buy it for the information but 400 usd which is going to be like 600 sing dollars it's a lot uh well, i uh, technically you're not just paying for the information there's also a lot of quality in the book yeah the, the book is a very good quality i, I have to admit so um, I haven't convinced myself that I need a 400 USD dollar book yet, especially when I can borrow it, right? So, um, if you have like a library that has this and you are interested in the scholarship of tea, definitely I would recommend this wholeheartedly. There is really a lot of information here that I think uh, I haven't really found in free or cheaper resources. If 
you don't need to go into all the details like you don't need to know about the Azores or like smaller tea producing countries there will be books uh, that are great uh, problem is that books on China, Japan, Korea like the ones that I like best um, the Chinese ones obviously Chinese sources there are a few scholarly works that I found but those in English are a bit harder to get like they, they don't normally go to the detail that I like was here Japanese books I find I normally read it in I can read it in Japanese and Chinese, so that's okay. Uh, British books, very well served, as you can tell. Um, yeah, so this is the Tale of Tea. It's a huge work. If you get the chance, I would definitely recommend you read it. You don't have to read the whole thing. You can just read like the chapters that interest you. I think that would be very worthwhile and to like, take a lot of notes. I am hoping that from the notes I can come up like do some more research and maybe write some few interesting blog posts on it because I, I do think there's a lot that's worth sharing and yeah so that's it if you are thinking of reading this I hope this review was helpful and let me know what other books you will recommend on this topic like scholarly tea research okay bye